Coming up on today's episode, Porsche releases their uh, Tesla killer, some moon shenanigans happening on the other side of the moon, weird stuff there, and we're doing a live show. We're going to talk about it. Let's get ludicrous. Hey there, and welcome to our ludicrous future. This is the podcast where we talk about all the cool stuff happening right now that's going to make our future uh, totally ludicrous. I'm uh, Joe Scott with the Answers of Joe YouTube channel. With me is the one, the only, Ben Sullins. What is going on? This is an alternate universe, you guys. <laughs> ben Sullins here from uh, the Joe Rogan Experience. And with me is uh, Tim Dodd, the... You know, sometimes astronaut? <laughs> yeah. I, it's me, Tim Dodd, the guy that tries to make videos, but they always take a long time on the internet. <laughs> a you long know, time. I just hit page 21, and I'm done. 21 is over an hour. This is over an hour long now. Jackpot. No, blackjack. Whoops. But, wait. Yeah, blackjack. Yeah, what? Pot. I, know, I, know, I know gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I do gamble. I thought, Tim, your videos were just you playing Kerbal Space Program. That's what I just see on the internets these days. <laughs> no, we were talking about that before the show that, like, it's so funny to me. I used to play quite a bit of Kerbal on my channel, but I, every time I'd play, people would be like, I don't subscribe to you to watch you play a video game. And I, like, all I would want to say is, like, I didn't make you watch this. It clearly <laughs> says Kerbal Space Program. You clicked on it. You know, like if you don't want to watch something, don't click on it, you bimbo. I don't know. I think it's cool when you include um, like out, I don't know, like animations or whatever, like from the game in an explanation because it's really helpful. Agree. You know, it's a yeah. really good visualizer. Yeah, and like, how else are you gonna get that, right? Like, if I need a shot of exactly. a Tesla, I can just like go outside and take <laughs> take my camera. <laughs> you need a shot of a rocket or something. You can't just like go get that. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I don't even yeah. know what what it is. I don't think I've ever seen anyone play the game. <sighs> Ow, Joe, have you ever played it? I forget. Uh, no, I get people asking me to every once in a while. Uh, I, I mean, I, I probably should get it and just like figure it out or something. But <laughs> I'm certainly not gonna do it with people watching. <laughs> it's it, if in your case joe i'd only do it if it's like something you want to do because it is a time sucker like it right will... well all video games are that's why yeah. i haven't gotten into anything like that yeah exactly. is there a is there like a twitch are there like is there like a ninja you know for kerbal on twitch somewhere yeah his name's tim don <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm not on twitch there's there's two pretty big uh, Kerbal guys, or at least there used to be. Um, EJSA is on Twitch, and then so is Das Valdez. We're two pretty big Twitchers. Um, but the cool. number one, the king of Kerbal Space Program is Scott Manley, uh, but he's on YouTube. Yeah. I, want, I wonder if that'd be, I mean, because it takes a while, right? I wonder if it'd be like exciting enough to be on Twitch. Although I guess Twitch is kind of like that. I remember oh, when, yeah. when Ninja was on... Um, the H3H3 podcast, he was talking about that, you know, like on YouTube, the YouTuber thing, someone comes to watch a video and it's like, hey guys, today we're doing this, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, like super energetic, jumps right in. On Twitch, you're going to be on there for like nine hours straight. Mm -hmm. So you come into someone's channel, it's just like, all right, so I'm just going to click over here. And you physically okay. hear clicking. <laughs> yeah, right. right. It's just like super quiet and like just, hey, we're going to be here for 13 hours, guys. Let's uh, let's just do this. And then every now and then a really loud audio thing when they get like tipped. Like, bring, bring. like yeah. oh, what is, what? Uh, it's so jarring. I feel like Twitch is always like really jarring to me. Well, I looked at doing something like that because I love this idea of AI creating videos. Um, and I had this idea because there's some Python libraries that make this pretty easy where... You could take, so there's YouTube channels that are like all the kills from Fortnite last night or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Or like all of mm -hmm. Ninja's like wins or something like that. And yeah, it'll be like super quiet for, you know, hours and then super spiky, loud, crazy. Mm -hmm. And then and then it'll be quiet again. So it wouldn't be hard to come up with um, an algorithm that just identifies those things, takes those clips chops them up it chops them up and creates like a highlight reel just automatically yeah um and then creating a youtube channel where literally it just 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 dominates just like 35 videos a day or something yeah. crazy like that huh. you know i don't not know a bad idea yeah. i could see ai curated youtube content like that very soon if not already yeah 
Well, uh, we need to talk about the fact that in a week from today, we're actually going to be live together in person. And you guys can, like, you listening, the listeners, you can join us. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? I'm really excited for this. This is our one year anniversary. Uh, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. September 13th was our first episode that was published. And so September 12th in Vista, California, which is kind of North County, San Diego. So if you're coming, come fly into San Diego and come join us. Where is it at, Tim? It's at Wavelength Brewing. Mm-hmm. And it's right downtown Vista. And the, the reason we chose this spot is it is in between LA and San Diego. It's a pretty nice, easy drive if you're in, you know, either of those places, San Diego County or, you know, downtown Los Angeles or whatever. It's pretty easy to get to. Uh, it's a really cool brewery that's just a science brewery. Like they, they have all these TVs everywhere and people will come and be like, hey, can you put the game up? And they'll be like, no, sorry, we're watching, you know, like they only play like science experiments and like just cosmos 24 7 yeah and like rocket launches and stuff it's it's awesome so if and they you're have a, science fridays or something that they have like science talks like people come speak mm-hmm. there and stuff like that so yeah they're they had trivia night tuesday that we couldn't compete like we try to do it like tuesday or wednesday wednesday they have another speaker coming from a college to do like a professor to do a talk i mean they're constantly it's like it's and they have this little stage it's, it's the perfect venue for us because it's like the right people already and then um physically the right size of space and really good beer uh so it's it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm i'm really excited about it yeah so it's gonna be good joe and i are gonna fly out there and hopefully you guys can come say hi and meet us in person yeah so how can people find out more i don't remember is it our com slash live 2019 is that what the link is our slash live 2019 and the problem tickets. is you're gonna have to know how to spell ludicrous <laughs> okay funny story i'm finding this is an issue <laughs> okay so i was i was doing a voice to text a lot of when i'm texting with people and stuff i just do the talk to text on my phone mm-hmm. and and it always spells ludicrous like the rapper always <laughs> oh no and i'm like does that mean he won does that mean he he <laughs> like that's a pretty pretty like you could put that yeah. as an achievement for sure like i literally <laughs> change how google thinks you spell this word wow <laughs> To my name. Yeah. That's funny. So we'll put a link to uh, the website in case you don't know how to spell it, like Google, which we won't, you know, fault you for. You know, Maybe Google's... we'll have to get like a olfpodcast.com too or something so it and so people don't have to try to. Someone just registered that. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Maybe we should be pronouncing it Ludicraus. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that will help people. Ludicraus. Yeah. But yeah, ourludicrousfuture.com slash 2019. We really hope to see you guys there. Uh, we're all we're about half out of tickets already, so if you want to come join us, go there right now as I'm talking about this and book your tickets. It'll be a fun thing to do on a Thursday night. I don't know of anything else that exciting for a Thursday night, and we might, <laughs> I can't promise this, but we might have a special guest, and you'll have to wait and see who that is if they're coming. Yeah. Sounds Spoiler. Good. Cue, cue it, all the Elon comments. I was just going to say. Spoiler alert, it may or may not be Elon Musk. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it may be Steve Jobs. We're just going to find some guy <laughs> named Elon Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, See, welcome Elon. to the stage. Elon. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Uh, that's good. You, you realize that if, if Elon was ever in a really bad scandal, they would call it Elon Gate? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh. Yes. God, yes, they would. <laughs> so good. So good. That is good. Oh. oh. Well, right. speaking of elongating things, mm. Porsche <laughs> made a car with elongated batteries. Okay. Okay. How, you guys are both fired from segways yeah, here. Okay. Go, go take a nap. It's yeah. <laughs> all right. It's time. So time to go sleep, guys. <laughs> He's like, I tried, damn it. <laughs> I really tried. Shut up. So, ben, yeah. tell us about this car. Okay. <laughs> Por- <laughs> Porsche is just announced yesterday, or they unveiled, I, I should say. They didn't announce. Hang on. I'm surprised you don't say Porza or something with like a Z. <laughs> <laughs> you know Porza. they have this whole deal where they they put out videos on how to say Porsche, right? They had like a whole campaign to try to get people to stop saying Porsche. Huh. But it's one of those things. Like I, I, I let me just rant about this for a second because that's why you guys are all here. <laughs> Is uh, so I say Jeff, 
and I don't know why. It's just how I say it. Other people say GIF. And I assume this those podcast say, is over. We're done. I assume <laughs> those other people say giraffe instead of giraffe and things like that. But you can't kind of control these things, right? No matter right. how many times Elon confirms the appropriate way to say Tesla, people still refuse to do it, okay? So despite all of that, like the the Taycan from Porsche, that that's just how we're going to say it. Yeah. You know, yeah, it is. that's just it. Like, like they can't con- go ahead. Like millions of dollars marketing. Try to make me say it differently. Go ahead. Like <laughs> it just won't happen, you know? So yeah. On that topic real quick. Sorry. Total yeah. tangent city. Cause we only have about two topics today. So we better go down these rabbit holes. I still get so many people, you know, there's the Mercury, the Gemini and the Apollo program during that era. A lot of the people, especially in the South would have said Gemini. Yeah. And so people will tell me, like, no, you're mispronouncing Gemini. Like, what? Really? No, I'm not. I'm sorry. Like, people had accents, and a couple people on, like, it's not even the majority of people at NASA. It just happens to be a lot of the people, like, on con- on console and stuff like that were the ones saying Gemini, mm. you know? So then everyone's like, it was the Gemini program. You obviously <laughs> don't know your stuff. Like, <laughs> wow. no, it's just how some people pronounced it. Doesn't mean that's the right pronunciation of the word. Well... And- of course, it can't just be, you know, you pronounce that differently from me. It has to be like, you are now completely uh, irrelevant and everything you have ever said is a lie. I'll, <laughs> I'll never trust you. You obviously didn't do your research. Otherwise, right. you would have easily found the correct pronunciation. Yep. I know this blows people's <laughs> minds, but there are some words that are correct both ways. <laughs> yeah. It is a thing. Aluminum, aluminium oxidizer oxidizer <laughs> yeah it always it so, always so gets many. me when you see the european spellings of of things like the word color or something there's yeah. like an extra u in there yeah or or, or british they they add an er at the end of everything it's not a banana it's a banana <laughs> well, that's like, more that's more australian <laughs> oh is it yeah it's funny oh, yeah. it's whatever so porsche <laughs> released uh, unveiled a <laughs> Thai con. Say 20 it, minutes into the show, we're getting to the topic finally. Say it how you wish. And it is Thai con like a convict wearing a tie. There we go. Ooh. There you okay. go. A Thai con. Thai con. Thai con. Now convict I remember. Wearing a tie. Con. It's not so. a toucan. Does it sell Fruit Loops? <laughs> <laughs> so is this is this car actually any good? Okay, so <laughs> it looks gorgeous. I mean, what do you guys think? Like, it's kind of hard. Yeah. It's undeniable, right? I mean, it's a Qu- Porsche. Porsches are yep. gorgeous cars. Yep, Porsche, that's what I was going to say. I, I, I've always really liked the styling mm. of Porsche. I've always thought it's that Porsche. It's a Porsche. Por- Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've, always liked, I've always liked how I, the Model 3 reminded me a lot of a, of a Porsche compared to, like, the other previous Teslas. So mm-hmm. I've always been, like, a fan in general. So I was excited about the Model 3 Uh styling so yeah i i like test i like porsche's styling a lot one thing when some of the comments were funny that it kind of looks like it's crying it has this like <laughs> yeah. little uh, arrow lip here for or the, the prison tattoo thing in. yeah yeah like a little tattoo thing there it's we go yeah. Ty con Ty convicts tie with his tears yeah so okay they <laughs> unveiled it and of course uh the world erupted um, I didn't even know it was happening, the the unveiling, but they did this kind of massive thing in three different places in the world, none in the U.S., ironically, but they, they were really touting the the kind of renewable nature of going electric and how this is the future, and et cetera, et cetera. This is same things we've been hearing from a lot of these guys, but now there's actually a car there. So this used to be called the Mission E, which actually sounded like a much more uh, appropriate name, but <laughs> here it is now. And uh, there's a couple versions of it, the Turbo and... And the uh, Turbo S. Apparently, there's also one just called Tycon as well, not not Turbo at all. But mm-hmm. uh, all the specs and everything that came out were for the Turbo and the Turbo S. Which a funny comment going around is, no, they do not have turbos in them. Right. That's that was yes. I was yeah. wanting some kind of explanation for that. Like, how but, do you call something a turbo when it's electric? But <laughs> it's unless turbo, I'm missing something, I don't know. But I, no, it's. I mean, yeah. doesn't turbo just mean fast? Is there like a real? <laughs> I know people are saying this and they're all up in arms about it, but but. Can we not just like this is a turbocharger on my phone? I've got like a it's turbocharged. Like I, yeah, yeah. Well, is that just, not just a thing we can say? I mean, are well, we just being nitpicky here? Well, going to back me, to definitions and stuff. I mean, a, a turbo is supposed to indicate a turbine. 
Uh-huh. But and a turbo charger. Now it's kind of become just it means it's fast. Yeah. It kind of became like a alliteration for the word fast or whatever, like a, a yeah. feeling, you know. Yeah. But re- yeah, really, you know, turbocharging, supercharging are ways to compress air and get it into the engine uh mm-hmm. in using different drives, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Using a compressor and a turbine for a turbocharger. Yeah. So the turbo and the turbo S, the two models unveiled, um, basically go right up against the Model S in terms of the you know type of car and all that kind of thing because it's it's not you know they it so one thing that would be really interesting is if I actually would have preferred this is if if uh, Porsche came out with so if you guys remember the the 918 Spider is the current zero to sixty world record holder and they made 918 of them it was a limited run and. I think the last time at auction, it sold for like over $3 million, something like that. And I believe it retailed for around seven or $800,000. So I would actually would have preferred that kind of a vehicle for their first electric car. That would have been amazing. And I think like people forget that Porsche is not aiming to sell a million cars per year. They, they, they very much are like the Ferrari kind of level of, of quality with a lot of their cars. And that's essentially what they're doing here. They're creating an extremely high-end luxury sports car. This isn't something mm-hmm. that, that you know, 99 plus percent of the world are ever going to want nor afford um, this car. So the Taycan Turbo starts at $150,000, just north of that. And the Turbo S is $185,000. Wow. I mean, nuts, right? Uh, yeah. You know, go so, ahead. So Nick. this is really more head-to-head with the Roadster than the Model S. Is it, though? Is it? Cause well, I don't know. How many doors is it? Four it's door. four. It is four doors. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's much more of a sedan oh, than yeah. it is like a sports sedan, like a high-performance yeah. luxury sports sedan. Well, price-wise, if yeah. nothing else, I guess it's more... Yeah. yeah, yeah, but the Roadster, I mean, a Roadster is an actual style of car, right? L- oh. Like, it's not a sedan. This is clearly a sedan. It's not a Roadster. Otherwise, it would have been a, like a two-door coupe kind of a thing. And that mm-hmm. would have been awesome. I think that would have been, that's maybe where they should have went. Um, because a lot of these other specs, if you're thinking of them in terms of comparing to a Model S, the Model S, like the, the way, in, and Marquez talked about it in his video, highly recommend watching that, where he goes a bit deeper into the specs, but... The, the Tesla Model S is much more of an everyday car, right? It has copious mm-hmm. amounts of storage, very comfortable driving. Um, you know, it's priced at a point where it's still very expensive, but a lot of people can, can stomach that versus this. Uh, this car is not that. This is like, I want to track my car. I want to take, I want to literally take it to revolution or one of those ev uh you know race events and just spank everybody that's what i want to do with this car so things like price range a lot of the convenience type stuff that you would expect or that you would want in an everyday driver just you kind of don't have to worry about i talked about that Mm -hmm. a little bit in my video like yeah the supercharger network clearly is if you are an everyday driver as an awesome thing to have but if this is literally just a weekend car or take it out once every couple months for a track yeah. day, who cares what, what what the supercharging network's like? And who cares mm-hmm. what the range really is other than can I get to the track and back? So I think, um, you know, th- there are these cars have completely different buyers and, and, and audiences for them. Uh, and, you know, with that regard, I think this thing is pretty amazing uh, for, for what it can do. Now, the the zero to 60 time is kind of whatever. You know, they say 2.6 seconds, whereas the Tesla Model S performance goes 2.4. That would only really matter in a drag race, and really the difference maker there is going to be the driver uh, because, uh, you know, two-tenths of a second difference on your reaction time is probably going to be a bigger difference than your car would give yeah. you. Uh, top speed, just about the same. Really, one of the big deals, again, is going to be the 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 track stuff so the handling and all that and of course you're talking about porsche here so this is like what they're known for and why people love them so i guarantee you this thing is going to just be uh, an an amazing vehicle on the track um but you know we'll have to see kind of kind of what that what that looks like so really cool i'm really pumped that someone's coming out with something that 
is competitive and is maybe going to give someone that was thinking Tesla Model S performance uh, a pause and say, hmm, maybe this instead because this isn't my everyday driver. You know, I want 200 grand just for my mess around car. You know, things like that. Yeah. It, it's clearly not many people, but mm -hmm. for those people, I think it's awesome. And and really, the the winner here, I think, is all of us people that maybe Tesla now is going to say, oh, man, I better step it up. I better increase, you know, some of my performance. I better add V3 charging. I better add track mode to the Model S. I better I better add some stuff here because the road the the Tesla Roadster, yeah. I mean, it's still quite a bit more expensive than the Turbo S even though it likely will will beat it in in many of these categories. I don't know if that's really, you know, the 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 audience here. I think if you're it's the Model S performance audience looking at this going, yeah, it's quite a bit cheaper. But this one's better. So, you know, <laughs> uh, depending on who you are, what your needs are, I can see both of these being very uh, attractive options. And hopefully they inspire competition, which just, you know, means better results for all of us. Well, let me bring up uh, a quick point and, and kind of parallel it to a, another car industry thing. So a comrade in our, in our Discord channel has been bringing up, like, you know, who cares about zero to 60? You know, zero to 60 is like on a track. You're doing that once. You're doing that at the start line. <laughs> And then from there on, like what matters more is like that 60 to 100 time, which sounds like the Porsche will probably beat the Model S in that it looks like, or be, you know, right on track. And they've focused on the idea of it being able to do that all day, like over and over and over. Repeated launches, Re yeah. Repeated launches, repeated, you know, flogging without it overheating and going into a limp mode. That's what they've focused on. But this is the same thing to me. It, yes, if you are a track driver and you you actually have taken cars to the track and do that often go to go to weekend track events and that's part of what you want you're probably not looking at a model s you know right. a model s is not that car a model three performance model three with track mode is definitely better suited for that you know has better suspension for it lighter weight sticky tires you know a, a battery and a powertrain that can handle mm -hmm. flogging for a long period of time um, that, so in that, in those cases, I think this car should almost be compared to the performance model three, but if you are just someone that wants a, a high end luxury car, you know, that you're driving around on the, on the streets, it still looks like the model S is going to be almost impossible to beat because on the streets, zero to 60, you know, who cares about top speed, who cares about top speed, zero to hundred, anything like that. Zero to 60 I mean, matters. They're all, you can do that every day. It, you know, these are like if if okay it, it's a, it's a funny thing but i can definitely so if you get into a tesla model s performance and ludicrous mode and you you just lay it down and and just launch that thing that feels night and day to a tesla model 3 performance yeah well like the model 3 feels like like very sluggish compared to that <laughs> now the model 3 performance is incredibly fast and amazing uh, and if you've never been in an electric car, any electric, like a Chevy Bolt seems like, what? Mind-blowing, right? <laughs> so I, th I, I think like, like the, the, what we're talking about here is such minute details that it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, the driver, the buyer for these vehicles, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. The Model 3 performance is probably the car you would want if you were a track guy, a track driver versus a Model S for sure. Um, the, the the yeah the zero to sixty only matters really on, on on a drag race, which is the only kind of racing I've ever done. And 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 uh, it, you know I, I do or enjoy that. Or just street so. or just on the street because you can legally you know if you're at a on an on ramp you can just yep. floor it to get up to speed. Yep, that's where you're gonna have fun with those you know fast zero to sixty times. Yep, yep. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say is um, in the same way that the in in Porsche's world they have the nine eleven, they have the nine eleven S. And then they have the 911 GT3 and GT3 RS. And it's funny because the 911 S is actually, you know, Turbo S is actually faster 0 to 60 and is a much better, like, daily driver all around car. It's, you know, 0 to 60 is, like, well under three seconds. Uh, it has more horsepower. It's all-wheel drive. But then the GT RS, which was, like, $100,000 more, you remove the turbochargers, you remove all-wheel drive, you strip it down. It's a hardcore track race car now. Way more expensive but like a worse street car by yeah. basically every metric. Right. You know, that's kind of the Porsche world. And 
the people that own Porsches will will probably put the 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 Taycan Taycan yeah Taycan mm-hmm. there we go <laughs> into that into that like framing of like I do I, I do care about the track and I do care about this and that um, and they just kind of have their own value and their own scheme for that so yeah that's kind of my input on that Joe what do you yeah. think you ready to buy one <laughs> sign me up um, I, I mean. <laughs> My so you were kind of just speaking to this. Tim was like, um, it's almost more a a Porsche owner or somebody that's really into Porsches. I cannot get used to saying it like that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they're probably there's something in my head and it's not coming up. <laughs> I would buy a crappy Porsche just to say I have a Porsche, right? Right, like that and, name that just the name it's the yeah. brand anybody who who wants to have a porsche but also wants to go electric now it's like yes i can i can have both and it's this awesome car i guess where i was going with that was um how does it stack up to the other to the to the rest of their lineup um how how mm-hmm. does this compare to the cars that are already out there that would make somebody go ooh, i want to go electric with this car as opposed to the 911 or whatever mm-hmm. and that yeah. i don't know the answer to because i'm not that much of a car guy but um <laughs> I was curious well, what your and thoughts were I on think that. in the overall world of EVs, this is still, like Ben was saying, this is a good thing for all EVs because what will happen yeah. is now you f- have the Porsche audience. There's, there's h- diehard Porsche fans mm. that are now looking at this. They might look at buying it, and when they look at buying it, they're inevitably going to be compared to the Tesla Model S. Like, that's every article written will mm. immediately compare it. So what it's going to do is it's going to make people realize still and put it in its place just how far... Uh, advanced the Model S still is. Mm-hmm. And I, again, I'm not saying that the the, the Porsche isn't gorgeous and, and a really good car, and there's probably still going to be people that buy it. But it's hard to say that it's still not being beat on most metrics that matter day to day. But but then again, so is like a, a Civic is, in that same sentence, a more practical car than a, you know, Mercedes-Benz, like, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> E-Class or whatever. So it's different buyers for that too, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to sell, I mean, well, <laughs> for the people that could afford something like this. And it's going to hopefully inspire more people. I mean, it's, I, I see this as a very, as a, as a total, a very positive thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I will say, and I've said it in videos and stuff before, the, the other companies, actually the other even Volkswagen companies like Porsche are doing a sub, uh, they're, they're definitely like subpar effort here. Yeah, um, sandbagging it. Yeah, the the e-tron and the iPace, and that's why I've not reviewed any of these things. I'm looking at it going, I would never recommend someone buy this thing. Like, what am yeah. I going to do? Like, go review it and tell you it still sucks? Yeah, because yeah. We, because <laughs> do it, it. It may be. I mean, and I've seen them both up close, and I yes, of course, they're beautiful. They're great. They, these guys know how to make cars, but when the thing can't even go 200 miles on a charge. How could I like go buy a, a Nissan Leaf? <laughs> it's over this thing. Right. You know what I mean? It's one of those things like uh, I just don't get it. Um, and so to see someone that's really putting forth their full effort, that taking to it me, seriously, right? Like yeah. Rivian yeah. is one that as well. Where I mean, I was like after that, I went to the unveiling, and I mean, other than not being able to drive the thing, which Rivian, still waiting on that. But uh, <laughs> I was with the specs. I was like. Yes. Like somebody sat down in a meeting and said, okay, guys, here's what we can do. And, and, and the marketing and finance and product and engineering all said, yeah, that's going to win. That is something I want to put my name on Mercedes Mm -hmm. and BMW and Audi and all these guys. How how did that happen? How did they go to a meeting and go, huh? We're uh, not even touching the 2012 model S, huh? Okay, that sounds like yeah, that sounds like Mercedes, the the best <laughs> or or nothing or whatever whatever their thing well, is. Well, that that just it just means that they're ticking a box. They're just doing it to say they did it. Yeah, and and, I, and I'm totally with you. Like any time a new or any time a company comes out with a new electric car, I think it's great. Um, my my criticism's always been that I don't feel like they're really taking it seriously. Yeah. Um, and if this one feels more like they are taking it seriously. So. Yeah, I'm gonna say just from the outside, this seems like the first time. Uh, that a non EV startup, like a EV only company, really feels like they they 
gave it their all, you know, and really feels yeah. like they put out a car that can compete with the rest of their lineup, outperform some of their lineup, and stand out on its own. And it's not just like a watered down, sandbagged version of some other car. It's like a, it's it's as if again, yeah, Rivian Tesla started with a blank, uh, a proper blank, you know, slate, and said, let's make it a really great car. And yeah, that's just a win. So the the last thing I want to talk about or just just mention on here is the uh, the the interior of this. I, I'm kind of in love with. Um, <laughs> I, I I I'm I'm not the one that says you know buttons are the end of me and you know if I have five buttons I'm gonna die. Uh, like like the the Model Three crowd out there. Oh, it's got LEDs in the cup holders. I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's pretty dope. <laughs> uh, but just uh just how how clean and modern and i mean it's it's they're doing a great job here i think they've got technically four screens uh if you guys are mm-hmm. just listening i'll try mm-hmm. to describe they have the the typical uh screen behind the steering wheel the the binnacle dash i've i've heard people correct me i used to say binnacle <laughs> binnacle i don't know the, <laughs> then kind of uh to your the right on the tie can <laughs> yeah, whatever. To, to 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 the right where you'd have like a center console in a Tesla, you have a screen. I believe that's a 10-inch screen right in the center there. Then you have some AC vents and then up above that you have another one. And then off to the right there's one in front of the passenger. That one confuses me. I know, it's kind of way kinda over there. Odd, right? Like I'm not sure what uh then, I don't then mind. they have a, an analog clock, which is kind of like a cool little touch, I feel. Mm-hmm. Other is than that an analog clock with a second hand? It's like a digital clock with a second hand on it. Did you see that? Let me see. Yep. Because it's just seconds on there and then a digital, tiny little digital that readout. That seems yeah. a little silly so to me. So you can time your zero to 60. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Track times. Yeah. But no, I think so, it's cool, man. I think it looks nice. There's a term for this and I don't know. I forget what it is, but like the... the um. The dashboard behind the wheel. Can you go back to that image? Yeah, uh, there you go. Um, this thing of having a digital screen, but it still is sort of like retro designed, like with those dials, like a regular speedometer or something. There's a word for it, and I can't think of what it is now, but it's like, um, do you know what I'm talking about? I don't I've never heard a word for that particular thing. Well, I know where it's like kind of mimicking a analog display. It's like new technology. It's, it's like a retro display in a digital format or something, but mm-hmm. I don't know why that always bugs me. Oh, really? I'm kind of like, if you're just going to have a screen back there, like, why would you mock it up to make it look like some old school thing? It's like, it's like Apple did that at first with the iPhone. They, like, did all these things to make it look like a an a old phone. school keyboard, and it functioned like an old school whatever, and, and then you're like, they eventually got away from that, but... Well, I you know... The microphone, sorry. Th- that's... I think maybe that's just a transition, you know, like a step that people, they want to take people through. Yeah. Um, a good Especially with a company like Porsche. It's a personal thing. I I just have this, I don't know. Yeah. But, like even, even in the Model S, I, I've, I've always kind of been like, well. Well, no, but that's what I was going to bring up because if you talk to some Tesla people, they'll, they'll tell you that, that the Model S was uh, designed to be a very very familiar to non-ev owners because they wanted it to be comfortable and feel exactly like a, a gas car in, in those mm-hmm. terms and and whereas the model 3 was decidedly not it was look Mark. we've Mark. yeah like we've uh, <laughs> like like we've already we've already conquered that challenge of hey uh this is an electric car and they're different and let's make them awesome and throw out all the old stuff and that's mm-hmm. why you know they did it uh, li- li- like even things of, of the exterior in terms of like how the the model 3 kind of has like a snub nose where it's like really short front end yeah. versus the model s is a much longer front end there wasn't really you know like there's just a big a bigger frunk there's not really like a reason why they had to have a bigger hood other than it looked more normal right it looked more like a regular gas car yeah yeah when i think yeah the model 3 ripped off the band-aid fully of like we don't need any of this you know yeah. <laughs> like and it, it's a good thing they didn't start in 2012 styling the model s like that i think it would have just been way too scary exactly People too much too soon well and, and one of the things that that tesla actually got right at the beginning well, say actually got right like it's the one thing or something but uh 
was that all the electric cars, and we've talked about this before, all the electric cars before Tesla came along looked like yeah. nothing anybody would ever want to drive. Like it just stood out like a sore thumb. It just screamed, I'm an alternative fuel vehicle. <laughs> I'm cheap. I, you know, I Eco. run on plants or something. And, yeah. and I, I mean, that was one of the things that I liked the most about the Tesla was like, this just looks like a nice car. Yeah. Right. You know? Well, that yep. that was the that was the thing. Like, and 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 I think this, you know, and and I think it's relevant, so I'll bring it up. But I, I feel like for a new technology, disruptive technology, to come in, it has to kind of win objectively, and n- not not with like an asterisk. Not oh, this is the best electric car. Yeah. Like it just has to be the best car. Yeah. Then. It's the fact that it's electric has to be a secondary thing. And I think this is so true for so many things. Like if you, if you say, oh, well, you know, don't do that because uh, it's bad for this or something. There are a percentage of people that will do that. But the majority of people aren't going to change their behaviors just because you're trying to guilt them into something. You mm-hmm. have to just you have to present them with something that's that's just objectively better. Like uh, this Tangible. is um, the founder of Impossible Meats or whatever, Impossible Foods. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, have you guys tried the Impossible Burger mm-hmm. ever? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I was blown away. I could not like if if you didn't tell me that it wasn't meat, I would have I would have totally believed it. Um, and that was the, that was I heard an interview with the guy. That's what he said. He's like, look, this just has to be objectively better. It has to be cheaper, taste better, healthier. And not be a black bean, you know, <laughs> uh, veggie right, patty, yeah. where that's clearly not a burger. Veggie burgers, those aren't bad. <laughs> but, but I get what you're saying. It, it needs it needs to be yeah. like meat. Yeah. Right. Like yeah, you need to sell me on why this is better, not guilt me into changing my ways. And I feel like Tesla right. with the Model S did that, and then that's what let them, you know, allowed them to do the Model Three. To your point. Yeah. I. Uh, Sort of switching subjects, but not really. I thought I would bring it up. I've, I've had my first real problem with my Model 3 mm. that is requiring a service appointment. <sighs> I don't know. So you have to take uh, it to like a different state or something? <laughs> no, no. I, I scheduled the thing on the app and they're going to come. I'm a little frustrated because it was supposed to come on Monday and it got rescheduled to like the 23rd because they had to order a part or something. But mm. it's the it's the seatbelt. There's something wrong with my driver's seatbelt. Um, and that little warning that comes up, it goes, meh, meh. oh yeah, you know what I mean? Like it just mm-hmm. like is it just kind of comes up at random All the times, time. yeah, mm. saying that there's something wrong with my seatbelt, and it's the same sound that comes on when like a car s- is slowing down in front of you and it turns red on the little screen, like Whoa. it's that warning thing that makes you you know defecate Panic. a little bit, <laughs> and it just it just keeps coming on every five minutes, and it's like, yeah. Um, but anyway, I I uh, I have scheduled for that to get fixed. We'll see how that goes. But it's supposed to be they're they're coming over here. It's a mobile thing. They're coming to your house. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have that problem? Uh, I started noticing this a really bad smell at startup on my Model Three. No. And I read into it that it's normal, like or not. I mean, it's not supposed to happen, but other people are experiencing it where it's mold getting stuck in the you know air con- air conditioner compressor. My BMW yeah. Three Series actually had the same problem, and I had to oh. take apart the whole like. Uh, filter box and and Lysol it all out and and try circulating air through it for like an hour while spraying Lysol through there to try to kill all the the mold, and it sounds like they have a solution for it now. But I will have a guy come out to to change the filter, and I also have the condensation in the tail lights too. I don't know if you guys have Ooh. had they that. They have that. I, I haven't seen that on the Model Three. That happened in my Model S, and yep. uh, and they replaced it. But yeah, yep. Yeah. That's the only problems I've had on on this car so far. It's been. Otherwise, uh, I mean, there's not too much that can go wrong with it, really, compared to a normal. There's actually a lot, you know, very few parts. One thing about the uh, Porsche that was interesting related to this is the uh, the engine, engine, the motor has <laughs> two speeds. Oh, it's yeah. Oh it, yeah. It's it's got a it's got a two gear transmission or something. Right. Yeah. It actually has a transmission. It actually has to switch. Yeah. Now now the idea I think the idea was launch control, like their kind of ludicrous launch mode or whatever, and then normal driving. Um mm. and so you can switch. Now uh Tesla tried to do this, actually. Uh the, the first roadster. the first roadsters, they were trying to create a yeah, essentially the same design, but they couldn't they couldn't do it. It's apparently, when it tried to switch from one gear to the other, it was spinning so fast that they it would just just 
fly apart and like just destroy itself. <laughs> uh, so so they they went and they switched back to uh, to essentially what they have now the the single speed. But I thought that was really interesting. Um, and I mean, yeah, those guys know how to make you know cars and motors and things. So you know, <laughs> I'm pretty stoked on that. I'm curious. They also apparently have an 800, 800 volt wiring system versus the uh, 400 volt, which I think what Teslas are, which allows them to. Um, run with thinner wires i think it was and and then that m- makes things in terms of thermal like heat management uh is better which is where the whole launch control thing where they can repeatedly go these zero to 60s over and over and over again um but i do believe somebody did that in a tesla recently in a model 3 and, and they were able to have some some decent results as well so i mean it's it's cool to see that yeah this car is stupid expensive <laughs> nobody's gonna buy it that that you know uh and <laughs> but it, there are like a lot of little things here that are that are pretty pretty innovative and maybe they're going to spark some other things that trickle down to the cars that us normies can actually afford. <laughs> you I, I do on. I do want to say uh one on that launch control thing and like the 0 to 60 times and repeatability. That's one thing that they they've been very like loud about. It's like we can launch over and over and over again. And it's like they were talking about like uh, launching at 0 to 60 at about 3 seconds when they were talking about that, you know, like it'll never slow down for 30 times or whatever. And that was yeah. like a big deal. Well, guess I'm pretty sure you could probably take a performance model S and just slow it down a little, like not give it all <laughs> the beans. Yeah. And you could do that same thing too. Like don't discredit them for, for being able to do a faster launch fewer times, you know? It, it seems, I mean, it's a funny thing, right? Doesn't it, it just seems like you're stretching a little bit. Like yeah, I can hit for something. 50 home runs in a row. It's like, but it only took three to win the game. So who cares how many you can hit in a row? <laughs> like, right. I don't know. It seems like they're trying to like find something there, but I don't know. Maybe there's a use case for that on the track that, that makes more sense, you know? Um, but I yeah, think, whatever. Yeah, I think it's kind it, of to show off their thermal management and, and trackability really just to use that as a metric of like, see, it won't slow down at all. It's just yeah. like a, in any event, yeah. it's awesome. I'm stoked on it. Yeah. I think everyone in the Tesla community should be as well, uh, yeah. because I mean, this isn't gonna. This, it's funny. This is not gonna take away from Tesla sales at all. You're talking about a almost a two hundred thousand dollar car, <laughs> like <laughs> not even yeah. in the same. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll reduce some of the Roadster sales. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but um, it hasn't come out yet. Yeah, exactly. Like. <clears throat> By the way, uh, someone sent this, I think, in Discord earlier, so I thought I would share it because this is pretty exciting. This is another uh, electric car, the Lotus Ooh. Avija. How would you guys say that? E-V-I-J-A. Avija? Avija, maybe. Avija? Yeah. It has EV a, at the front of it. It's a British company, so what would you say? Avija or something? <laughs> no, there's no R's in... I keep telling you this. That's Avija. <laughs> that, was, that was way more Australian. Sorry. <laughs> well, okay, but but if you listen Jaguar. to Robert Llewellyn and Fully Charged, Avisa. he says Tesla. That's how he says Tesla. Huh. <laughs> it's just a thing. They just add stuff, anyways. So check this out. <laughs> and we're pissing off all of our British <laughs> <laughs> and Australian and New Zealand. And and we're we're not invited to Fully Charged live now. Great. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, but this looks. I mean, yeah. So it's Lotus, who you know. It's Lotus. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and uh, and you know that's what the original Roadster was, uh, you based know, based on. on. I mean, they literally bought them and hacked them apart. But yeah, this thing, I don't know. Uh, someone was commenting. I think this company's like, like almost went dead and then came back or oh, something. Yeah. But uh, like a hundred times, Lotus is like <laughs> just barely survived <laughs> for most of their existence. As this, at this point, is it like uh. the BBC? Like, there's just a you know. Ten dollars a month every British citizen has to pay. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! You might have to turn this off. Ooh, I am too excited by this. This, this is thing stunning. is sick. That's that's a pretty gorgeous car. Oh yes, please. If that's sub hundred thousand, you know, like like they're uh, that won't be sub hundred thousand. That'll be supercar territory, like two fifty. But. But Lotuses have generally been pretty cheap, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, like the Evoke and stuff, and you know the the Elise and the Esprit, like they're all relatively for I'm, I'm sub hundred thousand dollars normally. Oh God, comrade in our Discord says it's a two hundred thousand dollar deposit. Deposit. What's the total price on it? Don't tell me. I don't want. You just ruined my day. You took me from <laughs> yes to no. Oh, you know, backwards God. it spells a jive. 
It's a drive. Man, that is a good looking car. Oh, yeah. I am in wow. on this one. This is like going to be in a James Bond movie or something or a mission. <laughs> Are they still making those? I, I guess that would make sense. It's an English thing, right? Yeah. Uh, I think there is one more James Bond with Daniel Craig involved that's in, in the process. I, right I thought now. he said he would never do one after that last one. I heard there's one more. Uh. But. Um, real quick, I, go to the one where you can see the wheels. I like that this car actually has some tire depth on it like a little bit of tire depth you know like it seems like the profile low profile tires are getting so absurd lately uh-huh. that you don't even get to see any black of the tire it's just like rim floor you know <laughs> like, right. i that, like that it looks yeah. like a it looks like a proper race car no this thing That's is cool. awesome now now this is does it does it send out those farts to the vents like that the green <laughs> spooky farts the, is that by like the way part of its the, there was a uh uh, I believe the Porsche has some kind of sound it plays through the speakers when you drive. Hmm. Well, that that's a European thing, isn't it? Isn't there an EU regulation that they have to? Yeah, uh, that's it plays outside. Yeah, it plays as like a little warning, oh, pedestrian warning. Inside, you're saying inside. Yeah, which is the BMW uh, i3, no, i8, i8. Yeah, the sports car looking one. They do that as well because mm-hmm. I think they have a three cylinder. Yeah, they do engine, and they like. I don't know. Somehow tweak that to make it sound like it's it's fast. Yes, yes, they do. Even though it's <laughs> in my dog head, I'm like, slow. They, they put a three cylinder engine in there just so you can hear it. <laughs> now <laughs> the sound. It doesn't now, turn anything. It just <laughs> runs. And I'm the still speaker. waiting. It I'm still waiting the for the Tesla hack, which I haven't haven't seen someone do this, but I'm totally anticipating this, where you get the AM radio that picks up the frequency of the electric motor, and broadcasts it in the car. Yeah, you talked about that. It's I've done it and it's amazing. I went into my model my model X. It doesn't have the AM radio anymore. Yeah, you said that too. What? <laughs> so, yeah, I remember being blown away by that. So Yeah, angry. that's crazy they took it away. <laughs> but so that's angry. And that brought up my my idea that I still want a modulator, like a a simulator where you oh, right. choose a car and it like does the same acceleration profiles and pipes the sound through the speakers. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Do it, Elon. Man, it so slower. Yeah, it would. It would totally <laughs> almost every like think about a Lamborghini Countach was like zero to sixty and five or something. And at the time, nineteen eighty five, that was incredible. Yeah. But yeah, it'd be way slower. But you'd get that. Let me think. I think those are actually a, a flat twelve. No, that was the that was the Ferrari. The Ferrari Testarossa was a flat twelve. Yeah, Magnum <laughs> PI. Yeah, and then the Countach was a V twelve. But yeah, hearing that and then like a slow acceleration, you'd be like, this sucks, but it's cool, but so it sucks. So did, did that thing with air conditioning, what did you say it was? Like some kind of sludge or something that was in there? There's like a mold growing a mold. in that air conditioning. But they don't know what it is? No, they don't know what it is. Maybe science will someday figure out. Does Joe see where this is going yet? <laughs> Joe looks bewildered. I think Joe's been <laughs> clueless. It just snapped in. <laughs> Maybe science will figure out what that goo is someday. Speaking of goo. Maybe it came from the far side of the moon. <gasps> what are you talking about? Why, guys? this leads me right into our next story. <laughs> God. We're all Amazing fired. Amazing how that happened. Mm. We're all fired. Yeah, we're fired. Uh, Have you been keeping yeah, up with this so show? I didn't really get time let's, to, to let's read it on this. Subjects. Let's get off of this electric car thing, like that's going to be a thing. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so China uh, landed on the far side of the moon a while back. Their mm-hmm. Chang'e, talking about words I can't pronounce, the, the Chang'e uh, rover. Actually, the, the Chang'e was the, the name of the, that's the four, Chang'e 4, was the, the actual thing that landed, I believe. The rover is called the U-2-2, <laughs> the Y-U-T-U dash number two, the U-2-2. U-2-2. Um, <laughs> But no, they, they announced just the other day, this is like really weird. They found an unusually colored gel-like substance on the bottom of an impact crater on the far side of the moon, and they have no idea what it is. Um, now, the moon has no liquid on it anywhere. There's like ice in some places and some craters that have not been, you know, the sun doesn't land on it near the poles and whatnot. Um so how something could be a gel-like substance on the moon is very interesting. Um, now, some are saying that it might actually be a glass-like material. 
um, because impact craters, they can kind of, you know, liquefy the, the regolith that like, you know, what happens with sand when you blow up a nuclear bomb, you get this like, oh, what's the name of it? Somebody's going to correct me in the comments of this, but there, there's a type of glass that's made by a nuclear explosion. Armus um, says Seth in our discord. What is it? Wait, Armus? Is that what it is? Or is he showing us some weird creature? Oh, he's, he's messing with us. We don't need this. Oh, um, that's from Star Trek. Okay, yeah, way wrong. The sand you're talking about is not Armus. Delete. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, there's the likelihood that it is actually just some kind of uh, sure. glass material. Um but they're going to look at it a little bit more. I think they had to shut down probably because um, it's probably about to go into the shadow and go into like a hibernation mm -hmm. mode. So it might be a couple of weeks before it, uh, you know, picks back up and has a closer look at it, but they're going to do some tests and try to figure out what it is. But it's actually really cool. Just that there is a Rover on the far side of the moon. That's the only, right. as far as I know, and look, correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, mm -hmm. but like, that's the only uh, Rover over there. We, we may have landed some things over there yeah. before, but no, that's the only thing to land on the far side of the moon. It's oh, the first okay. time humans have ever put, isn't that, there's a whole actual half of a world mm -hmm. that we've never even like looked at. Like, I know that the moon is a lot less like geog ge geologically, sure, I don't know, mm, geologically point. like diverse, you know, like it's not like the earth in that sense at all. But still, I feel like if you land in altogether like 20 some places or 30 or whatever it is with all the rovers and everything. Like you still haven't sampled much of that planet or the planetary body at all, like mm -hmm. at all, <laughs> you know, it just seems crazy that this is the first time humans have actually put something on the other half even. Are yeah. we going to, well, are we going to take bets on what it is? I, I think I'm with Joe that it's probably some kind of like melted, you know, I don't know, sand or something kind of. Yeah, if they start playing with it and it's actually like flexible and malleable and stuff, that would be super weird. Like I don't even I don't even know where to start with that. But uh, tardigrades, oh. we we, we <laughs> put them up there. Just a collection of tardigrades, and now it's they're multiplying. Colony. And next thing you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, humans. They're gonna build their own rockets and come take us over. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Tr Trinitite is the was the thing you were looking for there, Trinitite. Joe. Trinitite. No, that's Trinitite. it. Yeah, you're right. Because cool. the Trinity test yeah um you know something that about the moon that fascinates me is that we call the far side of it the dark side just because we can't see it but when you actually look at like a 3d image of the moon and turn it around the far side is way brighter than the side that faces us there's like these mares and and dark spots all over the side that faces us but the other side is like it looks like mercury it's just completely it's pretty white. a lot smoother too lot like smoother, not yeah. nearly as cratered yeah which is weird isn't it is well, it's got a lot of craters, but I guess maybe it doesn't have big ones like Tycho. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The moon is just nuts. And should we <laughs> well, segue? No, seriously, everything about it is nuts. I mean, like, there, it's it's the biggest, well, with the possible exception of Pluto, but Pluto and Sharon are like a binary system, really, more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in terms of like an actual moon slash satellite, it's the biggest proportionally to the size of our planet and the entire mm -hmm. solar system. I was going to mm -hmm. say, what about Titan? But you're saying proportional, like proportionally. Yeah. yeah. Hold this thought. <laughs> Tim's He's gonna... got a prop. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. I, so for those of you watching or listening, sorry, I better start getting on watching us on YouTube. All right. Tell me when to stop. Uh Oh, here we go. When do you think I'm at like the right relationship? between the earth and the moon. For those of you listening, I'm holding up a marble that's uh, maybe a little, they're, they're scaled to each other in size, uh, but one marble is, I don't know, like like twice as thick as a, a thumb, and the other marble is about as skinny as your pinky. So pretty pretty small marbles. Um, and tell me when you think we're at the right distance. Right there. Right there? Right there. All right. That's like 50 miles off the surface. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would go touching. I know this Wait, trick is going to just keep going. And keep are you going. getting it's, it's further away there. or closer? I can't I'm tell. getting further away. Oh. Well, you lost me. I, I, one dollar. That's so, my... so We've so only you... got like an hour here, Tim. So. <laughs> so do you guys think that like, is this too far? No. Uh, no. Ben, you, you, you've folded though? Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. The, I'll, the I'll, I'll, 
I'll let you do your thing. I know where you're going with this. I'm the not the proper lie. distance between these two objects is about a meter, so about th- yeah. three feet. So about this far. That's wow. how far away the Earth and the moon. It's just surprisingly distant. Like, mm-hmm. it, we don't think it looks... I don't know. And, and, and proportionally, they're, they're pretty similar. And we always see them like on a, like a thing that compares the size and they're like next to each other. But like if you were to have a poster on your wall with them like in scale distance, it's not close at all. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, actually. It, 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 there's some weird numbers here, right? We're like, like, how much bigger is the sun than the moon? It's like 400 times. And this, oh, way more than that. And, and the moon is like, like it, it's like 400 times away to where that's how we get this perfect yeah. eclipse size. Yeah, is because 400 is the, yeah. Yeah, no, I forget. it's more than 400, isn't it? Isn't it like 4,000 or 10,000 or something ridiculous? Like 10,000 times smaller, but 10,000 times closer. Hmm. 400 is the number. I, I, I did a video about this a while back, and I remember 400 being the number. I forget exactly how, how it, it lines up. How much bigger but it's like, is the sun than it, the Like the sun moon. is 400 times further away. Dang it, you guys are right. It is only 400. Yeah. yeah, 400 times the size of the moon, right? And it's 400 yeah. times further yeah, away yeah. or something like yes. that. Yeah. Like that. So that so, it yeah, you guys makes are right. this perfect I it was, eclipse. I thought it was way more than that. I thought it was like 4,000. It's weird just, how just those numbers repeat, off. right? It, like, uh, what's the other one? I, now, I don't know if scientists are just, just use these numbers just to say, just to mean a lot, or if they mean like, <laughs> it seems kind of an impre- imprecise thing, but you're like, uh, okay, so, so how many stars are in a galaxy? It's like 100 billion or something, right? And then how many galaxies are there in the universe? It's like also 100 billion. Like, I don't know hmm. if they're just saying 100 billion just to say 100 billion or if they're <laughs> saying it because, because like beyond that, you know, your mind is like can't fathom. We can't really even fathom yeah. how much money that is. It's like how much money, you know, uh, Bill Gates makes uh, in a year or something. But, but like we can't really even fathom the number billion. Like I remember as a kid, a big thing that they were trying to get us to understand this. And they said you could fill up the entire state of Texas with quarters and it would go knee high if you had a billion quarters. Like yeah. and the Texas Whoa. is massive, so like that's how that's how many a billion really is. So when what? we say there's a hundred billion stars and there's a hundred billion galaxies, like like that number is beyond comprehension. And it also just happens to be the same number of grains of sand on every beach in the world. Yeah, always like the, you, you just always hear that. Shut yeah, up. yeah, no, like, seriously. There's more stars in the sky than there there's a, on this beach right there. And it's like, how did did you what? <laughs> How fine there's like, is that there's a guy out there. One, <laughs> two. Is that a grain of sand? No, that's a that's a stick. Three, four. Do the black ones count? Okay, the five. The constable of ways and means, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that scale thing, uh, it, this isn't a segue into our next actual topic, but again, this is the week of just random chatting. Uh, I'm going to Europe at the end of October. And I'm going to visit the world's largest scale solar system. So it's going to kind of stem off this of like, how far away do you think this is? And then we're going to scale this up. They, they have an earth that's about the size of like, you know, like a, a meter wide or something, a nice big earth. And then in a museum, and then there's a moon over on the wall that's scale. And there's a sun that's like five kilometers away. That's this huge hundred meter spherical building. And they have the whole scale solar system throughout Sweden. And it ends oh, up wow. being almost 200 miles away is where Pluto, or like, or it's like 300 kilometers or something away is how far Pluto is. So it's going to be super cool. I'm going to like do that little road trip and just kind of like show this, cool. this scale solar system, which I think will be really fun. Are just a get, fun little quick video. Did you find access to the Russian version of the space shuttle thing? No, not yet. What's it it's called? In Ukraine. The Buran. Yeah. Buran. Remember, yeah. We were talking about that. And you're like, somebody get me access. I want in. Please. I want that. <laughs> If someone works for the Ukrainian government or the army or what air force or whatever it is, oh, I want to see that so bad. So my video yeah. last week on the Skylon, I, I'm mentioning, I'm talking about space planes, and I mentioned the Buran or however it's supposed to be pronounced. And I, and you said I, was, it never flew. I said something about it never really got off the ground. I mean, the program never really got right. off the ground, but of course, it did fly once. So yep. I am now irredeemable <laughs> to so many people. Yeah, because I How dare used a you, turn Joe. of phrase that they didn't like. Isn't that funny? I never really got off the ground. I know. I knew exactly what you meant, and I knew exactly how the internet was going to poop their pants as soon as you said it. I, I kind of go. I went like, mm-hmm. "Oh, nice that's... knowing you, Joe." Yeah, sorry, Joe. <laughs> that's You're done. it. That's it. <laughs> We're All taking downhill. away your YouTube. YouTube just like can't have this anymore. 
<laughs> well, you just got to switch to a sp- uh, fashion YouTube, and now you've got your whole thing going. <laughs> well, I wanted to talk about, uh, since we're talking about the, the moon and all that stuff, um, tomorrow, or if you're listening to this, uh, it's basically today, you have about an hour or two to get online, if, if you're hearing this right now, and hopefully catch um, India's attempt at landing on the moon. This would make them, this is their, their Chandrian 2 lands tomorrow or sorry today right now basically <laughs> <laughs> um and this is really exciting because this would make them the fourth country to softly land on the moon um i say softly because you know israel just recently <laughs> uh, about six months ago or whatever landed on the moon just not very soft <laughs> um yeah so uh this is really cool this would this would be very historic this is a, a substantial lander i mean don't forget there's a lander and a rover and an orbiter so they're doing like the the boost stage is now an orbiter around the moon it's at about 100 kilometers in altitude um but they have separated the boost stage and, and that orbiter have separated the lander is starting to lower its its altitude and get ready to touch down and they're going to be touching down on the south pole of the moon which is again really exciting somewhere we haven't been somewhere that we really think is a, a really important place to study for ice and for potential human travel in the near future. Um, this is a, a good mission for humanity and India did it at a price. It's, I've seen for some reason I've seen this thrown around like three times now, half the price of uh, the latest, what was that one movie? Um, the big, like that last ender end game. What, what's that thing called? Avengers? Avengers movie. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's I've seen this like 10 times people articles quoting they did it for half the price of the Avengers movie like that's just like the new industry standard of how much something costs <laughs> just seems so silly to me uh, but I didn't that's... know they shot that on the moon <laughs> <laughs> so those are know. apples and oranges <laughs> yeah it just seems like such a weird way to compare something half, but 356 million so they did it for half of that <laughs> yeah it was about 180 million dollars which huh. is a uh, that is a cheap program for how advanced this is really really great work from isro yeah yeah. um that you know that includes the launch that includes the the probe the the orbiter the probe and the rover which is so cool um yeah so yeah yeah, they're they're super impressive and and it's it's good to see them getting some press for this and getting the attention they deserve yeah definitely and this this little thing here shows all the landing sites um so you can see how much further south uh chandrian 2 will be compared to even like surveyor and luna 6 and of course you know the united states uh and and the soviet union for a long time were the only ones to land on the moon uh china did so with chang e only a couple years ago a handful of years ago um they were the third country to softly land so this could put them at the fourth country to softly land something on the moon with some serious scientific payloads, uh, you know, scientific capabilities on it. It'll be really impressive. I'm going to be live streaming that tomorrow. Uh, oh, cool. Or right so now. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're listening to this, as soon as this wraps up, be sure and tune on over to my channel and we'll watch it land together. Um, this will be my first ISRO coverage period. I was hoping to do the launch, but I was gone. Uh, I was on the road while it launched, so I didn't even get to catch that. But, uh, yeah, everyone keeps asking me to do a video on ISRO. Joe, I know you've talked about ISRO. A while back, yeah. Um, it's definitely time I do a video about them soon because they are just awesome. I think. No, I love that. I love that video of them launching 144 satellites. <laughs> and it, it just looks like corn fling off of a cob. Just like all of these satellites just like flying back. It's like, wow. Yeah. That's really cool. It's, they've done some cool stuff. I mean, and they their launcher has a cryogenic upper stage, which is something that is definitely con- I mean that's hard to do that's a impressive feat and it's a very impressive engine on a so far very very reliable rocket they're they know what they're doing it's good that, stuff that whole cryogenic thing that reminds me so Joe the Skylon space plane video you were talking about that how it makes its own liquid oxygen on the way up or something like that yeah Tim did I get that right <laughs> that's, I don't trust myself no to be honest that's something I don't know. I just realized, like, when you said that, I didn't know, and I still don't actually know the answer, is was it, does it make it and store it, like, on a scent, you know, during that first bit of time, or is it something that just they flash freeze it and it immediately is burnt once they're lighting the rocket engine? That's something I don't know. 
And unless you saw something that talks about it for sure what it does, I, I don't know. I don't have that answer. Well, I thought I saw that it also stored hydrogen as fuel. That would make sense. And, yeah, and then it won't obviously make the hydrogen oxygen is the oxidizer, air. but um, yep. but instead of having to load up with oxygen and take off from the ground with that weight, it just kind of like cools it as it goes and like creates, you know, kind of stores it. And then when it's ready to kick in, it's got that, that fuel and can, that was my understanding of it. And of course, comments told me I was wrong about everything, but um, <laughs> so now I don't know. I don't know if I was right about it or not, but that, that I, was my understanding. I think it. one of the tricks to the rocket equation is that it, well, and the reason it kind of cheats the rocket equation is it never ends up with all the mass of the liquid oxygen. Right. You know what I mean? Because otherwise it's kind of tomato, tomato. You know, if you take off with it physically on the ground versus like igniting your rocket engine with all that weight, you know, those are splitting hairs and you're really only gaining a little bit of efficiency if you, you know, are mm. taking off at that point. So I think the trick that it does that's so impressive is actually s creates the, the liquid oxygen in real time and burns it off immediately. And it has to do that in that like millisecond time frame yeah. and compress it and do all it is still nuts and still really cool. Obviously I just, I don't think the mechanism is storing it into its own like proprietary mm. tank and then like yeah, doing it yeah. later. Yeah. Well, it's that, it's that pre-cooler on the engine that's, yeah. that's supposedly so groundbreaking and, is going to make that possible. That would have been a good transition when we were talking about air conditioning. Well, we Go didn't have that scheduled. It just kind of came up. This was just an <laughs> idea. <laughs> just winging it. Uh, you know, why don't, I mean, why don't they just like freeze it, flash freeze it better? And then all rockets can use that. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Why don't they just, Oh, did someone say what? Oh, <laughs> Hmm. Okay. Well, brings up this week's, why don't they just from a listener named, Rune, I hope I said your name right. Um, Rune or Rune uh, Rindholm at Gas Minizel on Twitter um, asks, uh, Everyday Astronaut and Elon Musk, why don't they just make a tunnel from... Sorry, guys, you got left out of that one. Mm. <laughs> Screw this guy. By the, by the way, I do think we, we should have our own Twitter you're, for this. You're dead to me. <laughs> but uh, why don't they just make a tunnel from Fremont, Hawthorne, Gigafactory 1 and 2, and then it won't matter where they produce battery cells, car parts, rocket parts. Just send them vacuum tube style. What do you guys mm. think? Why don't they just do that? Boring tunnel, baby. A vacuum tube, though? I mean, eventually, maybe. But like, So is he talking Hyperloop, basically? Yeah. Or at least just like a nice, clean connection between the factories at first. You know, like we can kind of dissect that anyway. Like, why, why don't they? How far away is Gigafactory from Hawthorne? Like uh, hundreds and hundreds what, like three of three hours, maybe 120, 130 miles from Hawthorne. I think it's really far, isn't it? Yeah. Or mm. definitely from like San Francisco. It's super far, right? Uh, We're all getting out four Google hours Maps. drive, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Cause oh, wait, okay. in Sacramento, it's like two hours from Sacramento and Sacramento is like two hours from San Francisco. Yeah, I'm just going to measure a straight B line. I'm, I'm getting but confused. That's... Fremont is the Tesla factory, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hawthorne Fremont factory. SpaceX. Yeah, I, sorry. I was thinking um, the other one. Oh, from Hawthorne. Hawthorne yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's yeah. okay. That's... It's about, it'd be about a 200 mile or 320 kilometer tunnel. Yeah, but they can tunnel pretty quick, man. Um, it and... only took them a year to do. No, 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 no. They they can do a mile a week, I believe. Hmm. Is the really? uh, yeah, I believe so. Well, I'd have to look. So I did the after the Boring Company event. I did a video breaking that down. Uh, but yeah, that was the thing is that they were able to do it like fifteen times faster than anyone else, or something crazy like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if this is a big deal. I guess is the question. Um, like shipping parts from there to there is that not? The, the the better question is why don't they just make cars at the Gigafactory? <laughs> 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 that <laughs> that would yeah. be a, a lot easier than all these other ideas. Yeah. <laughs> or or just finish the Gigafactory. I mean, it's right. not. It's like thirty percent finished or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I th I think from my understanding is eventually that very well could be a reality someday if you know boring company totally knocks it out of the park and they have a hundred of these machines and they can just boop plop in a tunnel between point a and point b no big deal who cares yeah it might be that might be a reality someday but i i just yeah i'm not entirely sure if it's 
worth it, you know, for what right. a little, maybe a little time savings versus like the cost of the tunnel over time. Well, you'd How many have, times to, have to use it. You'd have to devise some kind of probably train to run on it or something because the, like right now it's pulled by a semi truck and the semi truck can definitely not fit in the boring tunnel. Um, <laughs> so, and you know, they would, or they would have to make the tunnels much bigger, which would throw off the whole kind of plans that they have already kind of working. So, so that whole thing, yeah, I think there's a lot of problems. Um, if you wanted just to kind of take those two ideas and smash them together, but there might be a solution there, but yeah, to your point, Tim, why, why do that? Um, where you literally the investment on that too yeah well and the just the regulation just getting approval from every yeah. town along the way you know? state <laughs> uh and you know I think they it, might hit some oil and make some money off of that <laughs> well <laughs> that'd be ironic and uh it would have to be under because i believe so you'd have to go basically underneath the rocky mountains uh if i understand correctly uh, because there's that that's the mountain range i believe separating Sierra nevada yeah, well, Sierra Nevadas, right? Okay, all right. Yeah. Rockies are east of that. That's right. Yeah, uh, but you're right. Yeah, so you'd have to go under a massive mountain range, uh, <laughs> which is probably. I don't think that matters though. Like, I, yeah, I think the whole thing about the tunnel, unless you like are hitting granite and stuff, but like, that's well, kind of the cool thing is what's above it doesn't necessarily contribute to what you're boring no, through. No, right, se. right. But you need to pull the the muck that they call it, the dirt, out of the ground somewhere. It's true, and, and it might be like, yeah, let me, let me, let me just send this next, you know, three tons of muck back, <laughs> nine hundred miles. miles. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's probably not going to be <laughs> the most efficient. That's uh, true. That's fair. Yeah, I, I think it's mostly just like, why don't the, the reason to why don't they just is probably it's just not worth it. Well, it's more like, why would they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why yeah. would they just? Why? Why? <laughs> Why, why would they just do that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was more of a fun one. And I think he's, you know, he kind of had like a, uh, threw up the rock on sign at the end of the, of the tweet. So I think he was like, kind of like winking at us about that one, but I think that's still a fun <laughs> one to talk about. Agreed. But what, what I definitely think cool? like inner city travel, you know, if you have a, say, you know, Fremont and if Fremont had like a Fremont two, like 30 miles away, sorry, 46, whatever <laughs> away. Uh, I think a tunnel like that would maybe be substantial. And I know like, for instance, there's, I don't, I don't remember which factory it is in Amsterdam. It's a really famous liquor factory. They have a tunnel in between their two buildings and the tunnel goes underneath the canal to connect their, like their line, you know, um, so they could expand their manufacturing capabilities without, yeah, without like moving everything, mm -hmm. you know, so it could be advantageous in some of those things. But I think this use case going between Gigafactory and stuff is just not necessary. Yeah, it'd be far easier just to make cars in at the Gigafactory. <laughs> yeah. imagine. Other than finding workers, I think that's just something that uh, I've not heard them talk about. But it's, you know, it's a not an extremely populated area where the Gigafactory is. So finding right. I mean because I forget how many people work at Fremont something like 30,000 people or something like that so it's like yeah. massive you know so yeah. you know 5 million square foot building it's like it's crazy so it's, it wouldn't be easy to replicate that in an area where you know the whole population of nearby towns is you know you're probably going to eat up a good chunk of that yeah yeah it'd be, it'd be a company town yeah like Disney and all that stuff <laughs> those yeah. like ideas in the 50s and 60s uh well uh what are you guys working on besides the travel plans for san diego All right <laughs> Woo. shall uh, i go yeah joe what are you working on you know i'm always working on something yeah uh, you always okay are. every <laughs> once in a while i accidentally make a good video <laughs> uh meaning that it was a topic that i was kind of like eh, whatever i'm gonna play around you know and, and then like i i do it and i record it and then nick my editor sends it back to me and i watch it and i was like this is actually kind of great <laughs> like i i didn't mean to make this a good video and it and it, it i think it's gonna be all right anyway uh that's the feeling i have about this one i don't think it's gonna be a very popular topic for my channel but i'm basically talking about something called tetrachromacy which is um we all have three different color sensing cones in our eyes mm -hmm. and that's called trichromacy because three chromes uh there are some people that have a fourth and can see colors that the rest of us cannot 
So by looking at that, I go into wavelengths of light and the UV spectrum and color theory, and I kind of explore all that and talk about how some people uh, see the world a little differently than the rest of us. And then, and then I look at like how some animals see the world and how what mm. it would look like if you could actually see all the different ranges of the UV spectrum, if you could see radar. Yeah, I was going to say, can you see like ultraviolet is, or something like that? Like what colors can they see? Uh, well, to spoil to a wait. little piece of the video, um, <laughs> uh, if you have your lens removed because of cataracts or something, you can actually see UV light. Whoa. Your lens blocks there. UV light, but if you have it removed for that particular reason... Uh, yeah, you can, uh, Claude Monet, the painter, um, had to have one of his lenses removed for that reason. And his paintings after that, all, all the white colors actually were more blue hmm. huh. because he was actually seeing UV light. Weird. Yeah. I didn't know that. And what, what's the title of the video? What are you going to title the video? Ooh, what am I going to title it? I'm um, curious what like angle you're going to so go on. I'm actually going to probably go a little clickbaity with it because I think it's going to be a good video. I don't, right. I don't go clickbait if I think it's not you know, the best <laughs> video in the world, but it's, it's not a topic that is going to immediately draw people in, I think. Uh, and Elon Musk is not in the title anywhere, you know, <laughs> but, um, but I think it's a good video and it's packed with some stuff that I think is really interesting. So I, I, might, I might get a little bit like the people with supervision or something like that. I don't know. But. Or is, it, is there anything, do you talk about the idea like, do we all see the same color? I talk a little bit about that, yeah. Because I, I always think that would be like a pretty part. Just do we all see this? Do we all see colors the same or whatever? Like, yeah. do all humans see colors or? Or I might do we say something like, what colors? if you could see all the wavelengths of the? Mm, uh, that'd be cool. Electromagnetic spectrum or something. But mm, I'll play yeah. with it a little bit. Sweet, that's awesome. I'm excited. It's it's a fun video. Mm-hmm. What about you, Benjamin? I'm working on this aerospike video. I've been really. <laughs> 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 yeah oh yeah it's like i'm it's going it's going out tomorrow already, actually so you, you already know. have your shirts on, you have your shirts ready for it yeah it's, it's like 45 minutes long it's the last aerospike video anyone will ever produce that's it so no more aerospike videos allowed on youtube putting a kibosh on them his, huh? his mm-hmm. is 22 pages long Ooh. <laughs> and you get three interviews you don't just have peter beck and tori bruno you also got elon to talk about it mm-hmm. yeah elon <laughs> um frankfurt Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Johnson, as you mentioned yeah. earlier. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. So, no. So, well, the video I um, had scheduled literally five minutes away from going out today, or sorry, yesterday, geez, or the, by the time you're hearing it, was two days ago on, on <laughs> Wednesday, um, is now scheduled for next week. And that was because I woke up to Porsche unveiling a new car yeah. that I just had to talk about. I'm like, crap, yeah. okay. So on one hand, I want to make a video on that. On the other hand, no one's going to care about this other video I had already planned because everyone, you know, is going to be wondering about this stuff. So, so that's going out. It's about me and my relationship with salt. No, just kidding. Uh, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> what? It was a random topic. It's, Salty boy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Something like that. So you'll just have to wait and see what that's about. So. <laughs> oh, an actual cliffhanger. Wow. Okay. <laughs> do Do you know the meme? It's It's a cartoon, and a guy goes to his computer, and like just a, a room full of soccer balls gets flung out and hits him in the face, and he falls down. And they use that whenever like everybody's talking about something on the internet. Am I, no, I haven't no, seen that. Am I uh-uh. memeing too much? Uh, that's that's what this morning was looking at YouTube and seeing all the Tycon uh, videos, yours and uh, Hyperchange and Transport MKBHD. Evolve. And what was really funny was was you and and Nikki over at Transport Evolve were like pretty positive about it. And then I see yeah. Galley is over at Hyperchange is like it's gonna flop. <laughs> it made me laugh. Well, yeah. it's a thing. I mean, it's funny too because because I, uh, I did you see Marquez's video on it too? Mm-mm. Yeah, no, I, I saw his. Yeah, he he did a good job, and and I was chatting with him before we were both like scripting and filming at the same time, and and it was a funny thing. Like, how do I sound not like a hardcore Tesla fanboy here? And mm-hmm. and I think I I think I pulled it off. I think he, he pulled it off <laughs> as well because it was like, look, this is a pos- This is a net positive. Like like mm-hmm. first off, Porsche doesn't have to make this car. They don't have to sell this car. None of that, even like in terms of their success as a brand or as a company, 
this doesn't even really play into it, exist honestly almost, yeah <laughs> l- l- like they could not do it and no one would care <laughs> you know right so the fact that they are and the fact that it's not at all targeted towards your everyday driver is like why would anyone ch- like 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 poop on it because it doesn't have autopilot or something like i think actually right. autopilot would be uh offensive to a porsche owner Right, because you mm. want to drive the car, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. don't want the thing to drive itself. That would that's like what you know cattle do or something. Like I'm a driver, <laughs> damn it! You, like I, yeah. <laughs> so you know what I mean? It, it, like it's funny. I saw a lot of negative, uh, a lot of Tesla people out there having really negative things to say, and I just think it's dumb. Right? Like it, like it's good. This is a great thing that that they're doing this, and I think we all should be supportive of it. And and it's not going to hurt Tesla in any way. If anything, it'll open up maybe some people that weren't interested in evs to you know other evs and see oh maybe yep. maybe i will get that one you know because it has that two two tenths better zero to 60 which we know as we said doesn't really matter but whatever i want the fastest you know so those kind of things like i think it should be positive i think people we all as a tesla community need to be in support of more evs that that are actually like worth a damn not like these you know the half-hearted attempts from the other automakers, which ironically are half owned by the same, by Volkswagen Group, like Porsche is. So <laughs> it's kind of a weird yeah. thing, so. Yeah. Well, you guys know what I'm working on because I have been talking about it for months now. <laughs> You're tan. I, I'm working on my tan. No, I'm finally, <laughs> I think I'm shooting today. I, I finished the script uh, this morning, actually really like finished the polished script for my Aerospike video as we kind of were talking about it. It is 21 pages long now kind of got out of hand it's gonna be over an hour it's gonna be great i'm flying down to mississippi quick to shoot with an aerospike for the intro cool I, I i like doing that like i i like if i'm bringing up a topic like the raptor engine video i shot in front of a freaking raptor engine like i feel like as far as like aiding to legitimacy and making you want to actually like continue watching i have a theory that if you're standing in front of the hardware, you at least are taking it pretty seriously you know and it, it sets you i'm trying to you know set myself apart from just, you know, someone like me normally sitting in my chair. No offense to you guys in your chairs or <laughs> Ben in your standing. Can we mute but, him? How does this work? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that's kind of cool. I just, and mostly I really, now that I've researched Aerospikes and my opinion went from they totally suck to like a lot more like, okay, I get why they've been pursued and made and manufactured. <laughs> I um, get why they suck. <laughs> <laughs> I I actually kind of fell in love with them, and this I, I have the, here. Here's how I'm, I I just actually decided to f- I still have to add a little this quip. Aerospikes are the rotary engine of rocket engines. You know how like there's this cult following for rotary engines, like the Mazda RX-7 that starts RX-1, RX-2, RX-3, RX-7, RX-8. Uh, the rotary engine is like a really simple engine. There's only three moving parts in it. And it's, you know, promises to be really high, all these high performance things. And the reality is like it's burns oil and it pollutes a lot and it gets horrible gas mileage, <laughs> even though it's like a 1.3 liter engine. This is kind of the opposite of that. It's, it does perform really well, but it's just like all of the trade-offs end up just not being worth it. Mm. You know, it's like you spent all that time and money developing this new engine and you got to the exact same place as you would have if you just boop, pulled this one off the shelf, basically, you know. Yeah. Kind of like the space shuttle. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the long run, yeah. I mean, we oh, just... people are, oh, space people are mad with me oh. now. <laughs> yeah. My childhood the, dreams are for, for those For those attending the uh, Our Ludicrous Future Live, please bring tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> yes. A- heirloom. <laughs> yes. Bring your favorite heirlooms. I am, uh, I would love, honestly, I would love nothing more than to have a live event and be peppered with, with vegetables. Like that's just, <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a weird kink, but all right. <laughs> no, it's like the ultimate dream. That's like the ultimate, like, you know, you've made it when people are hucking vegetables at you. Cause you said something wrong. Like, I just it? want somebody with a giant hook. <laughs> oh just yes. Like, just pull, pull you off stage. That's the yeah. other one. Either of those bring them. Start, start <laughs> playing the music, the wrap it up box. Remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wrap it up, oh, I really hope we get to meet some of you guys at at the uh, live recording. So if you live in LA yeah. or San Diego or you know San Bernardino, one of those places uh, near ish Vista, California, please make the trip down on a Thursday night. I I guarantee you'll have a lot of fun. It'll just be I think it'll be fun a new energy to record all of us in the same room with a live audience. 
It'll probably lead to a lot of antics. And just um Yeah, who knows how it's gonna go, yeah. but we're gonna have fun. And now are are we gonna live stream it as well, or is that beyond our capabilities? We're not going to live stream it. Okay. It'll be live, but then we're going to edit it down and, and make it into a, a just kind of like this format, but from live. Just so we don't have to worry about I don't wanna have to worry about getting a good clean feed and all that stuff out live. That's just is yeah. a whole other layer of of mess that I don't want to deal with. <laughs> You've had <laughs> yeah, plenty of experience. Some experience with that. <laughs> yeah, let's add that to the whole thing. <laughs> let's, let's go sit outside in 100 degree weather while we're yeah. at it. And, uh, yeah, ex- let's do that. Okay, cool. Exactly. And the, the thing is too, your, your ticket price does include a drink ticket too. And uh, Wavelength Brewery, uh, as a, as a, beer guy i they like went full science on their beer like the, this is a science brewery that's what i love about this place is like you know it's a science brewery first and hans the the brewer is like hardcore chemist and so the beer is like just extra awesome where you can tell someone just science the crap out of it and i th- just think that's a cool a cool way to to brew beer you know just yeah so any brewer named hans is trustworthy <laughs> that's true <laughs> never trust a skinny brewer they always say right (laughs) it's true well is that it that's it i'll see you guys next week on in person Uh, in (laughs) live in our ludicrous Ludicrous future Future Live. live Hey, thanks so much for listening. If you like what we do and you want to kind of help get it out there, uh, you can give us a nice review on any of your podcast streaming platforms, whichever one you use. That kind of helps get it out there. Also, we do have a Patreon set up, uh, so you can join us there at patreon.com slash ourludicrousfuture. You can get your name in the credits. Made a whole other group of like-minded people. It's a lot of fun. We do appreciate it. We'll see you there. <laughs>